1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. The Lord himself, not an ambassador, not a representative, not an angel, not Michael or Gabriel, but the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Oh, what a glorious day that will be. And he's not coming in silence, but with a shout. A shout that will penetrate the graves. A shout that will shake the very foundations of this world. And with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, calling his children home. Then, oh then, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We shall be caught up, brethren. This old world, full of sin and sorrow, will no longer be our home. This old world, full of death and heartache, will no longer be our home. This old world, full of sin and sorrow, will no longer be our home. This old world, full of darkness and unrighteousness, will no longer be our home. We shall meet the Lord in the air and be with him for all eternity. You see, this is not a fairy tale. This is the word of God, and it's as sure as the rising of the sun. We are living in perilous times, times when the majority of people have nothing to look forward to today. The majority of this world live for only this life, because that is all they have to look forward to, this life. But for the child of God, for the one who has put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's a hope that goes beyond the grave. So I ask you today, are you ready? Are you ready for that shout? Are you ready to meet the Lord in the air? If the trumpet were to sound this very moment, would you be caught up or would you be left behind? What if the rapture happens today? Do you have peace in your heart with the rapture happening today? Right now, wherever you are, you can pause this video and pray to your Heavenly Father and find assurance in Christ Jesus that if the rapture were to happen this very moment, you would be caught up. What a wonderful day the rapture will be to see Christians who died in Christ rise before you, to see Christians rising before you who look like they lived 100 years ago, and then to see other Christians who look like they lived 300 years ago and others who look like they lived 1,000 years ago, all of them rising up before you, and then you, who are walking on this earth, to be caught up next. In the twinkling of an eye, you will be changed. In the twinkling of an eye, you will be transformed. In the twinkling of an eye, you will have a wonderful, glorious body. Look forward to the rapture. If you have an uneasiness about the rapture, I invite you to pause this video and wherever you are, whether it may be on a bus, at work, on a jog, at your home, or in your car, pause this video and speak to your Heavenly Father. Pour your heart out to Him and understand why you have an uneasiness regarding the rapture. The rapture is something you and I should anticipate to be with Jesus for all eternity. You know, sometimes you see films that depict a picture that someone who has died and gone to heaven wants to come back to this world, but that is entirely incorrect. Believe me, the people who have died and gone to be with the Lord in heaven do not want to come back to this earth. And in all honesty, I don't blame them. Why on earth would anyone want to come back to this world? This world that is full of suffering, sorrow, apprehension and anxiety. Those who are in heaven are in eternal bliss. They are experiencing a peace that surpasses all understanding. They are experiencing a peace that only comes from God. They don't want to come back to this world. And believe me, when you get to heaven, you will too. Oh heaven, oh heaven, when the rapture happens, the saints like you and I will be taken to be with the Lord in heaven. Look forward to the rapture in heaven, 
There will be no fear of the future. There will be no fear of tomorrow. There will be no fear because of rising interest rates. There will be no fear of rising inflation. There will be no fear of mortgage repayments. There will be no fear of rent rises. In heaven, you will think to yourself, I am here. For a moment, just a moment, I want you to close your eyes and just attempt, just attempt to imagine how you will feel to know you have made it to heaven. And for all eternity, this will be your state. Our imagination is too weak to even imagine what we will feel. To open your eyes and see the eternal bliss of heaven, you will think to yourself, thank God I accepted the free gift of salvation. Thank God for what Jesus did for me on the cross. Thank God I walked on the narrow path and not the broad road that leads to destruction. Look forward to the rapture. I have preached in the past on the sermon topic regarding 10 minutes before the rapture. In this sermon, I spoke of how, when I was very young in the faith, for some reason, I always thought that 10 minutes before the rapture, the sky would turn black midday and the sun would cause the sky to look apocalyptic and the winds would start blowing uncontrollably and then a great meteor shower would take over the skies and everyone would look up to the sky watching the meteor shower fall to the earth and there would be a great earthquake that will shake the foundations of the earth 10 minutes before the rapture and the waves would start roaring and lightning would begin to flash uncontrollably and people would know something big is about to happen. In this sermon, I went on to detail that in the past, I heard a man say, I will live the life I want to live, and then right before the rapture happens, I will change my life. But I emphasized the point that, how will you know when the rapture will happen? This is why it is important to live each day as if the Lord Jesus Christ will call your name in the clouds today. We don't know when the event of the rapture will happen. You won't get a notification on your phone telling you that the rapture is about to happen in 10 minutes. It will happen when you least expect it. You will be where you always go. If you regularly sneak out of the house to commit shenanigans, you will be where you always go. If you regularly go to church, you will be there. If you regularly go to prayer meetings, you will be there. Now today, I want to preach a sermon to you. Not about 10 minutes before the rapture, but about 10 minutes after the rapture. 10 minutes after the rapture, I pray that everyone hearing me now will be in the presence of the Lord. But the harsh reality is that 10 minutes after the rapture, not all of us will be with the Lord. Because even now, as I preach, not all who are listening to me are with the Lord. For a few minutes, I want you to consider two groups of people and the terror and the regret that they will feel 10 minutes after the rapture. Group number one, the Christians by name only. There are those who profess Christ, but they haven't truly believed in his name. They attend church, but they were never truly born again. They have a head full of knowledge, but a heart full of hell. Imagine how they will feel to know that the rapture has taken place, but they were not caught up. And the book of Revelation and all of its events are about to happen. The second group of people I want you to think about is the people who don't believe in God and the people of other religions when they see that their family members and friends who had been true followers of Jesus Christ were right and are now gone. I am sure there will be a church service like no other after the catching up of the saints happens. I am sure even those in the world who thought that US Christians who used to talk and speak about the rapture and thought we were crazy will realize that they were right the world looked at Noah as if he was crazy when he preached about the flood. The world made fun of him when he told them there is coming a flood. 
How many people were saved in the days of Noah when the flood came? Come on now. How many? Eight. Only eight were saved. Now think of the millions of people who were on the earth at that time. Out of all the millions of people on the earth at that time, only eight. Not even 1% of the world's population got into that ark. So now, I ask you, my brother, my sister, how many do you think will be saved when the rapture happens? Come on, how many? Now when speaking about the rapture, some people are afraid of it or feel a sense of apprehensiveness regarding the rapture because they are not sure they will be caught up. They are scared that they will fall into the first group of people I have discussed. But I want to encourage you that the rapture is an event you should long for. Don't fear whether you are saved or not. Romans 10.9 If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. You can know you are saved because the Spirit bears witness that you are born again. You know you are saved because your life has changed and is changing and is continuing to change. You are becoming less and less like your old self and more and more like a disciple of Jesus. Don't fear the rapture. Look forward to it. How can you not look forward to it? How can you not look forward to heaven? Allow me to be just honest for a second. This world is a mess. It is a complete mess. Joy never ever lasts in this world. And this world has a strange way of shocking you. This world is so broken and nothing lasts forever. Even the most wonderful, most glorious marriages on this earth still end with death. Even the most wonderful marriage still ends with one of the two being heartbroken when the other one dies. But when the Lord Jesus comes and claims his church, there will be no more death. Imagine that, living a life where there is no death. Look forward to the rapture. Because after the rapture, there is no more death. Oh, I have seen families weep. I have seen families weep bitter tears. Pastors see that. Pastors see uh, what others don't usually get to see. Time and time again, I have seen families feel grief, real grief, real pain, real sorrows, when they lose the person that is near and dear to them. But I want to encourage you to look forward to the rapture. Look forward to the coming of the Lord. At any moment, the Lord Jesus Christ could come and shout out our names and we will leave this world. Look forward to it, friend. Because when he comes, all of your sorrows will end forever. Look forward to his coming, my friend. Because when he comes, you will never ever worry about your health. Sickness has plagued humanity. The sickness has stalked humanity. Even if you are young and fit, sickness can grip your life. But in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in an instantaneous moment, there will be no more sickness. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Jesus, Jesus himself said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The angel said, This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. The rapture has no specific date. It is going to be the most sudden event that has ever been experienced on earth. It will happen in a split second. The trumpet of the archangel will announce the rapture. The dead in Christ will hear it and resurrect from the dead with a glorified body with which they will be granted 
a supernatural transition to meet the Lord in the skies. For a child of God, the graveyard is not final. They are waiting. For us who walk on this earth, we are also waiting.